I am Ed Sperling. I'm the editor-in-chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Winbon with C.S. Lin. I'm going to talk today about the future of DRAM and what's changing. C.S., we have a lot more data that's coming into chips. Mm -hmm. How does that affect the memory, the DRAM in particular? Okay, so basically because of the, there's a lot, a lot of data movement, yeah. the uh, power consumption will increase when you have more data uh, move at a fast speed. So they're they going to impact the, the way the DRAM is used. And there's more types of DRAM that is in, are in the market today too, right? Right. The, the correct. Basically, there are uh, different types of uh, DRAM created to meet different uh, requirements. Example, for a PC server type, they have a standard DRAM. For the mobile phone, they have a low-power DRAM to meet uh, different uh, requirements. Let's take a closer look. Sure. CS, what are we looking at? Yeah, we are looking at the memory hierarchies. Uh, basically, uh, that's a way to tell uh, what kind of uh, you know, requirements and also how to serve the purpose. When you look at the, this kind of uh, uh, pyramid architectures, from the top you can see uh, the registers that with a different uh, latency. For example, register with probably around one nanosecond, and followed by level uh, one cache and level two cache which is about 10, um, followed by the level 3, level 4. And then is the DRAM, which is the main memory that we have seen in the market today. And next will be called the storage class memories, and followed by hard disk and the tech. So you can tell each one of the uh, memory to serve different purpose with uh, different latencies. So you can see that it's close to the, uh, the uh, CPU core. It requires much faster response times. So uh, when uh, Customers try to use the memories, they have to choose what memories require to meet their needs. And a lot of times now we're seeing mixed memories coming into chips too, right? Because right. they're going into packages, one type does not serve all. That's correct. That's why we create uh, a different type of memory to meet different needs. Yeah. Are there problems when you do mix them? So is it DRAM a DRAM and you don't have to worry about when you mix a, a faster DRAM than a slower one? Or is it are there challenges in terms of integrating the two of them? So basically, uh, this uh, biggest change, uh, particularly right now, is that uh, because of the, uh, the AI, it have a lot of data, right? And you need a high throughput. And by the same time, the power consumption increase. And sometimes you have to provide, uh, find out the optimized solution to reach that kind of things, right? Uh, for example, the HBM is good for the you know, uh, AI uh, memory, memory in the server but it may not be suitable for the uh, uh, device for the edge or even for the endpoint. And the endpoint and edge are always going to be power constrained, right? That's correct. And particularly for the endpoint, they are battery power. Yeah. You also have to think about things like heat and cost when you get into those markets too, right? Right, that's correct. Yeah. For example, when the power consumption goes up, then the definitely heat goes up. Right? That's why uh, Windbank has a, a different called cube, a solution with a different way to allow uh, the heat sinks to attach to the SOC. So you have all these different types of DRAM, different options. What are the trade-offs here? Is it all just about cost and, and uh, speed? Is it size? What, are you, what, are you, what kind of metrics are you dealing with here? Uh, definitely, I think cost is a very important, or probably the most important factors. But again, uh, as I mentioned, uh, for some uh, products, better life cycle is basically so more important, right? And also the performance. So that's why when you are choosing the memories or DRAM, you have to choose, for example, uh, the, for the mobile phone, they are all using the low power uh, DDR, which, uh, rather than the standard DDR, which is mainly used for PC. You also have a limited number of pins here too, right? That you can connect all this stuff? That's correct. And basically, uh, right now, uh, they have a different uh, DRAM standards. And you can tell, in order to increase the bandwidth, there's only two ways. One is to increase the clock. So you can see the modern DRAM actually can go up to like you know, gigahertz, right? Uh, the second one is to increase the I.O. But that's one, uh, one thing they call the interconnect uh, efficiency, right? And basically, uh, you can have the 64 I.O.s, but once you go higher, and definitely it's not uh, good enough. So that's why uh, this is called interconnect efficiency. Actually, uh, you, you have to use a different way in order to achieve that. We're also seeing DRAM showing up in new applications that it didn't get used in before, right? Right. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. What's happening there? Where are you seeing it? I think the, right now the most, I think the emerging one is called the generative AI, right? So you can see 
it requires a lot of uh, huge density and also the high, very high bandwidth, right? And as I mentioned, in order to achieve this kind of bandwidth and density, the HBM uh, memory was used or was popular in the, the, the AI server, right? But again, uh, to bring that uh, solution to the edge or even endpoints become extremely uh, difficult, yeah. And the edge is this very ill-defined area because it runs all the way from servers that are sitting at the edge to all the way down to the almost the endpoint, right? Right, correct. What are the big problems you're trying to solve with DRAM now that you didn't solve in the past? So I think that there's two big uh, issues here to uh, solve. Uh, one is called bandwidth. The second one is called cost. Right? So we use this example, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this memory hierarchy. Uh, particularly, uh, you know, once the process nodes move to more advanced, the SRAM uh, is no longer uh, scaling according to the, what we try to do. So there's uh, one solution, for example, from the AMD uh, 3DV cache. They are using the, uh, for, for L3 cache. And the way they do is they instead of embedding into the, uh, the SOC, they have uh, called the uh, staking another, for example, 64 megabytes. Right now it's over 100 megabytes of SRAM using the uh, TSV more advanced process. Uh, the way they do, they try to uh, resolve the called internet efficiency issue. For example, for wire bound, assuming you have a full, this kind of thing, and for the micro bound, it can increase uh, you know, the, your bandwidth of you know, more pins, more IOs within a certain area. And for the hybrid bound, that's what the AMD is using, it can increase the internet efficiency, and he, which means that you can bring up the bandwidth at much higher than uh, what you can do before. And one of the reasons you want to do that is because you can't just add SRAM in like you could in the past, right? The SRAM doesn't scale like the digital logic, so now you need a lot different ways of attaching memory. You can't just do it all inside the chip. That's correct, because again, uh, once you have more data, you need more uh, memory, uh, SRAM, to compute. But and you also will scale down to uh, more advanced uh, node. But at the same time, the memory size, actually, uh, the weighting of the SOC become bigger, right? So it's kind of against, uh, you know, the way we try to provide more cost-effective solutions. So the only uh, solution or viable solution is to move SRAM out. And from the system view, we can provide, you can reach the performance and also with the most optimized uh, cost uh, solutions. We mentioned heat before. How does heat affect DRAM and what do you do in order to control it? So basically, uh, again, heat, uh, you know, come with uh, how you operate the chip. For example, when you clock increase, when your die size increase, definitely uh, you consume more power and the heat will go up, right? And uh, let's look at uh, the uh, AMD uh, solutions. So now SRAM is on top of SOCs. But the way Winbank proposed they using a so-called cube, uh, which is at the, at the button. So uh, there's a couple of advantages. Number one, I think basically, uh, you allow the SOC to have a heat sink on top, right? So which means that you can, uh, it, because again, the SOC need to operate at much faster frequency. So uh, heat definitely will go up. And there's a way you can kind of dispatch uh, the, the heat. And this is one of the solution Winbound is proposing. But in order to let the, uh, the cube, which is memory device, uh, you have to perform the call the TSV, which means that the uh, SOC need to have a signal passing through the SOC, go to the subtract to the, the PCB. And actually, uh, Winbank is proposing this solution to solve the, not only for the heat issues and also uh, the density and also the uh, interconnect efficiency issues. How about for advanced packages too, when you start getting into 2.5D and 3D, same thing? Yeah, so basically the way we talk about 3D is that you can see this is more like 3D architectures and the two is very different from the conventional 2D, which is the, the SIP operations, uh, SIP, uh, SIP packagings, right? So this is uh, the 3D architecture for the, uh, uh, the we, uh, Winbank is offering. You think about in the past, you had a, a chip and it was, you pretty much knew how it was going to be used. These days, you have a lot of different use cases. You've got a lot of different applications. We've got a, really a lot of different custom silicon. How does that affect what you're doing with DRAM? How do you choose the right DRAM? Yeah, right. Actually, this is not the uh, simple question to answer. But basically, uh, when you look at uh, you know, uh, how to choose the uh, DRAM, there are three uh, key uh, parameters that people always have to think about. Number one, the density. Uh, density means that what kind of application, what kind of purpose. As mentioned for the AI, uh, for the memory for AI, definitely need very high density. The second one is the performance. 
uh, propose a uh, title, for example, the bandwidth, the throughput, right? And then tied to how, uh, you know, you're going to react, how to calculate, how so you can uh, answer the request uh, from the end user. The number three, I think also very important is the power consumptions. Right now we are talking about green energies, right? We're talking safe earth, right? So basically this is also a very important issue and there's no one fit all. Okay, actually you have to think about what kind of products, what would be the most important key parameter you want to achieve first. And it's even more than that, right? Because now it's not just one type of use case, it's also how many different features you have in there, which ones you're going to prioritize within your design. That's correct. Uh, you have to prioritize and select the best solution that you can get from the market today. So there's a lot of choices out there. What's the solution today and, and how does that change over time? Okay, so yeah, let's take a look at the, uh, this table here. So when we talk about the density, performance, and power, let's look at the trend. So for density, uh, because of, uh, lots of more and more data was generated, right? So basically, the chain is going up, which means that you need higher and higher densities. Uh, no matter it's for the server side, for the uh, edge computing, or even for endpoints, right? The second is performance. Yeah, definitely, uh, everybody's hunger for data. So the performance uh, will go up. So in the performance, actually, we look, we look at uh, two portions. One is the called bandwidth. So within a certain time, how much data you can get uh, you know, from the memory. And the second one is latency, which means that it's a response time that when the end user, uh, end user send the commands, right, they call latency. And for bank will definitely go up. For latency, actually, uh, they want to maintain or even further reduce. And number three is power consumption. Definitely, everybody wants to have lower power. But again, sometimes you cannot get three, uh, you know, all together. So uh, now the solution uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the past or now is that in terms of density, you can see it's pretty common to see the module, right? So for example, uh, it was commonly seen in the PC and server area, so it can e easily reach much higher density with a module approach. And definitely, uh, the second one is the move to the more advanced process node, so that allow you to have can get more bits per uh, millimeter square. So that's why you can see there's a lot of migration from the uh, you know from the three X all the way down to like uh, you know, under one uh, X and one A one alpha, right? So this is in terms of density. And in terms of the performance, definitely. There's only two ways to reach the performance. One is called increase the clock rate. But there's a you know, side effect. For example, you increase endurance and also it's not easy to take care of the signal integrities. And the second one is called YIO. So you can see the standard theory and they have a by 8, by 16, by 64, even by 128. But again, as mentioned, once you have more IOs, this uh, create two issues. One is the internet efficiencies. The second one is power consumption. And the third one is power consumption. Definitely, that's why uh, the DOM will create the low power DDR for the mobile phone. And at the same time, move to the more advanced process allow you to reduce the operating power as well. So this is kind of the solution we have today. And when you talk about all three of those together, that's really what the memory wall is all about, right? That, that so-called, you can't get the data in and out fast enough, you don't have, it takes too much power in order to do it, and, the, and part of the reason is just higher density. That's correct. Yeah. So basically, there's a kind of the combined together. This is not like a, you can sep you cannot separate uh, in the, independently. So what comes next? So basically, here it show the uh, kind of the scenario that uh, they, they try to solve these uh, three key parameters. Number one is density. So you can tell that there's a called advanced packaging that to achieve that. Uh, one of the example is HBA. So basically, uh, instead of that, not just staking, they they stack. Uh, uh, not just memory itself, also the SOCs and the other accessory parts. And this is the one way to do uh, in the features. The second, uh, the, the internal bandwidth, as I mentioned, the interconnect efficiency. So right now we're moving for, uh, from the uh, wire bound to the micro bound to the even hybrid bound. And one example to show is that there's a ratio. If we say the, the hybrid bound is one, then the uh, micro bound will be five, and, and uh, wire bound will be 10. Okay, so basically this kind of ratio uh, it can increase your uh, the bandwidth dramatically. Okay, and the third one is the power consumption. Uh, basically, there's one uh, topic to talk about how to reduce the data movement. So the, the one of, uh, there's many ways to do that. For example, uh, called in, uh, compute in the memories. And uh, the second one is called uh, near memory computing. So they are all the way to, to uh, further reduce the movement of data. And uh, that's why uh, the uh, also, the second one is reduce the clock, right? 
But again, uh, it's, it's contradictory to, uh, to cheap uh, the performance because, again, clock, right? Usually you slow down, then you reduce the, your, your data processing power. And, and, and the third one is to reduce the IOs, right? And also uh, reduce IO voltage, basically, uh, because the, uh, when the memory is sitting uh, you know, outside, you need a, a bigger I/O, bigger power to drive, right? So the, the, uh, once you move the memory close to the, you know, to the uh, the process unit or even inside process unit, you can reduce the I/O power dramatically. This is one of the challenges that a lot of people are facing as they move into some of these advanced designs because you've got so many different choices. You've got lots of memory choices. Each one of those can affect the overall performance of the chip, how hot it runs, all sorts of issues that you have to think about, right? That's correct. Yeah, that's correct. In the past, uh, I can only choose the uh, solution from the existing port that I have in the market. But right now, it's time to move further, for example, not just uh, from the stand-up parts. That's why all the uh, 3DV cache is coming, so which allow the uh, more earlier engagement with the chipset makers to make a solution, try to provide the most optimized the solution among those three key parameters, performance, power consumption, and also power. C.S. Lin, thanks for a really interesting conversation. Yeah, thank you.